In this video, we're going to be using Zillas to perform vector similarity search on images. Zillas is a vector database. It is designed to handle massive data sets containing vectors. Vectors are just numerical representations of data. So this is your text documents, audio, and that also includes images. Traditional methods of searching through these large data sets has been consuming and computationally expensive. So Zillas uses advanced algorithms and data structures tailored specifically for vector similarity search. Instead of comparing each point individually, Zillas organizes these vectors in a way that optimizes similarity queries. This allows you to quickly find items that are similar to a given query vector. Zillas is focused on cutting edge technologies for data indexing, storage, and retrieval with an emphasis on GPU accelerated computing. For a high level overview of this project, uh, we are going to get the connection from the notebook to Milvis and set up a cluster. We're going to import images from Google Drive. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. We're going to set up Zilla's cloud. We're going to insert our data, and then we will do our similarity search using a ResNet 50 model. And then we're gonna go back again and do it with ResNet 152 to just compare the output and see how it's different. To get started, the first thing that you'll want to do is set yourself up a Zillas account. When you do that, you will have $100 worth of free credits so that you'll be able to follow along with this demo for free. I'm going to create a cluster and then we'll go over downloading the images, creating the embeddings, modeling those, but then we'll be able to write those embeddings over to the Milvis database. I will be using the starter serverless plan. And I'm just going to give this the name image search. So that's the name of my collection. The metric type, there are two options and I'm going to be choosing this L2, which is just your standard Euclidean distance. All right, so now I am going to put the public endpoint in my code. I already have the API key over there. So I will copy this and you'll see that image search has been set up, but that it doesn't actually have any data for us. I'm going to add my URI. Like I said, my API key is already here. All right, so now we're going to dive into this demo. Here is a Google Drive link that you can use to access the images that I'm using. They are images of my family, but if you want to go along with your own images, that'll work too. So we're starting like we normally do by pip installing our packages. We'll restart our runtime. And then now I am just going to be setting up my directory to match the docs. And so we are in the content folder. And then I'll add one for Python as well. Okay, so now this should work. All right, so 
we are going to pip install a couple more libraries. Pymilvis is going to be used to connect to Zilla's cloud. We're going to use Torch to run the embedding model. We will use Torch Vision for the actual model and pre-processing. And then GDown is for working with Google Drive. And the TQDM package is so that we get those cute little loading bars while our model is training. import these libraries. Here are the docs for starting here. Um, these docs are what I followed to put this together. And so here you're going to need to add the Google Drive link. So you could use the link above, open that up, Let me make sure that that works. Then we are going to set the output path and file name for the downloaded file and then download the file from the given Google Drive link using GDown. All right, perfect. So that link I gave you works. Next, we're just going to be setting our parameters. So we had given the collection name, image search. You had already seen me put my URI and uh, I had already put my API key here. And then now we need to set up our cloud. So we will be first connecting to the Zilla's cloud cluster using the URI that we had there. This is just if the collection already exists, drop it. Okay, and now we're going to be setting up our schema. So it's going to have the ID, the file path, and the image embedding and we will now create an index on that collection. Here is that L2 Euclidean distance metric that we already talked about. And this is just to get the file path of the different images. We have 1619 images. Okay, so here we are going to create our base model using ResNet 50. And this is actually not creating the model, it is uh, defining the model. If you haven't used Torch before, I learned this the first time that I used Torch, is that they actually build their neural net models sequentially um, by adding the different layers. So that's where we get this sequential function. Here we're creating a preprocessor for making sure the images are the same size. Um, so we're going to resize, crop, normalize, or at least we're setting up a preprocessor. So we didn't actually do those steps here, but we created a function that will allow us to do that. Now we're going to insert the data. So this one takes a minute to run, but we're going to embed the function that embeds the batch and inserts it. Then we're going to read the images into batches for embedding and insertion. And here we're actually going to insert the data.
All right, I hope you're ready because we are about to perform our search. Now for this, I have already placed four images that all looked different that we can do our search on. The code here is going to go through and embed the images. So this is the process of converting these photos into vectors using our ResNet 50 model. And we are going to iterate through and use that preprocessor that we set up that'll crop and normalize the images. Um, then we're going to do the search through these embeddings for similar images. And then at the end, um, it'll be using matplotlib to set up a visual display for us that will list the search time and the distance of the chosen searched photo to the image that I provided. Okay, so let's get started. All right. Perfect, so we have our output and I am just going to store this so that we are able to do a comparison in a little bit once we have the output from our next model. Okay, and now I'm just going to go through and actually update this to be using ResNet 152 and rerun. Awesome, now we get to go take a look at these results. I actually went back and ran this a couple more times myself and found that in general, the ResNet 152 model had shorter search times or shorter distances, but that was not always the case at all. And even in our results, we're going to see a lot of instances where the ResNet 50 has shorter distances. Here though, we will see that the ResNet 152 model, the search time was about three times faster than ResNet 152. Taking a look at the first photo, we see that all the distances for the ResNet 152 model are shorter compared to the ResNet 50 model. And really, the only photo that looks different here is the last result. In the second row of results, the distances are actually larger with the ResNet 152 model. And you can really see this because the second result returned from the 152 results. My daughter has her arms in, and we'd assume that the ones that have the arms out are going to be more similar to the given photo. In the third row of results, it's my daughter and husband with their arms up wearing coats and the distances, again, they're higher with the ResNet 152 model, even though these are super close results and you get to benefit from the faster search time. In the fourth row of results, all the images look really similar with the exception of where is my son placed because you can't really see him in the given photo and then in the search results he's sort of in different places the distance for the first result is very close but then the distance for the resnet 152 model is much larger for the other two photos but again the search was quicker I hope you enjoyed this demo where we did vector similarity search using images. Be sure to like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in my next demo.